Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen, and uh, to go along with my series Toad Trips Okeechobee, this video is all about tackle preparation. You know, with me, uh, tackle preparation is something I take very seriously. This, this is probably going to take me two, two and a half hours. It's going to take me longer to do this than just about anything that I do because I want everything to be perfect. I want to have everything that I need so I don't have to stop and go to a tackle shop while I'm fishing or the, you know, after I'm fishing one day. Or I don't have to be left out on the water and, and just be upset because I don't have something in my, something specific that will attack a certain situation that I might come across. And so all that research that I did online is mainly, for me, it all boils down to, it does, it helps me to choose the right tackle. So what I'm gonna do is I've got all these brand new uh, Bass Mafia boxes. So I've gotta move some tackle over from my old boxes to my new boxes. And I've got to get everything ready for this trip. Anything that I'm not gonna need on this trip, I'm not taking. Uh, so the research that I've done has, has helped me to determine what lure colors I need, um, what types of lures I need, what terminal tackle I need, and all the other things. And I'm just going to put them all together in a kit, turn the camera back on, and show you what I've done and why I've done it. All right, well, so basically I spent the last several hours uh, just moving my, old, my tackle from my old boxes to my new boxes and getting the, everything thing labeled and going and finding some of the tackle, some of the lures and the crankbaits I knew I was missing and that were you know, in the boat or out in the garage or hanging up or somewhere else. Just getting things organized. And now, finally, um, I can go through the tackle that I'm going to take to, uh, to Okeechobee. And in my research, uh, there's a few things I noticed on the videos, um, in the fishing reports, and uh, in just about anywhere I saw, uh, the colors, the typical colors that they were using were black and blue, June bug, purple, dark colors, green pumpkin. Um, and then with spinner baits, it was white and white and chartreuse, bright colors, lots of flash. So I, I'm keeping that in mind in my lure selection. The other, the other thing was the types of baits. You got spinner baits, chatter baits, which are one of my favorite things to throw in the grass. They were designed down in Florida. They were designed to be able to go through grass. Um, swimming worms, paddle tail swim baits, uh, flipping baits, little, um, little crawfish, black and blue or black crawfish uh, style baits that are really, really narrow, uh, that are designed to punch through, uh, punch through three, through weeds like the vile craw and, and uh, rage, uh, rage bug and, and other kind of baits. So um, that's kind of what I'm going to put together in a kit. And I'm going to see what I have, see what I don't have, and what I don't have, I'm going to go buy. Uh, hopefully I don't have to buy anything because I've got more tackle than I could ever think of. All right, well, when, when trying to choose the right lures for a, a fishing trip and everything else, the research that you do is very, very important. And what I'm looking for when I'm doing research and trying to choose the baits are several different things. One is water clarity, water color. I'm looking at those videos. I'm trying to figure out by looking at it, what the water clarity may or may not be. Depending on the weather, you know, a lot of times it can be stirred up or, or muddy or whatever. But for the most part, I want to get a general idea of what, I'm, what to expect. Now, the most important thing, though, is cover and structure. What type of things, what kind of type of situations am I going to be in? What type of lures are going to work in the grass on Okeechobee? And so the grass that I, I or the uh, lures that I choose are going to be according to what I can fish in all of that grass in that dang, dang fish bowl that's down there. And, uh, and so it's going to limit me to a point. Well, it, because it limits me, it makes it kind of easy to, to choose. So the, the easiest things to, to start off looking for, or start off packing, is your hard baits. Spinner baits, chatter baits. And that's about it. Top water, maybe, and a lipless crankbait. So uh, I've got my spinnerbait selection is so simple. I keep it right here in this little worm bag. Of course, it's very, very messy right now, but 
I mean, it's chartreuse white or chartreuse and white. I got a couple of black spinner baits, uh, and uh, and then my buzz baits are in there too. So that's, I mean, I keep it real simple. I'll go through that bag here in a little bit, make sure everything is top notch and there's not a whole lot of rust on the hooks. And and uh, and you know, if I need to replace anything, I replace it. So spinner baits. Um, my chatter baits, which are right here. And uh, so I have several different colors. I have a chartreuse and white. Green pumpkin works really good in, the, in grass and in that watercolor. So I got a lot of green pumpkin. I got some black and blue, uh, which also work real good down there in that watercolor. Got those packed. Um, and then my lipless crankbaits, which are all the way down on the bottom. So I've got my lipless crankbaits and just throw them in the box. And uh, maybe a few more things, you know, some top water. Grab my top water box. This thing always still stays full. I got some whopper ploppers in there. I got some, uh, a lot of walking baits because that's what I use mostly. I got some, uh, some top water prop baits that look like bluegill, uh, things like that. Just my top water box. I don't ever, I don't hardly ever take anything out and leave it at home on that. And, uh, let me think. And that's about it really for hard baits. I may take a few other things. I've got some confidence baits like the the THKO wake bait that actually runs pretty good in the grass. So spinner baits, chatter baits, lipless crank baits, top water for the most part. And that's it. Pretty simple. Now, then when looking through your soft plastics, that's when it gets a little bit more complicated for Okeechobee. Okeechobee, from what I've gathered, is a, you're flipping and pitching, and you're throwing these soft swim baits, things that you can Texas rig or rig weedless to get through that grass. So let's kind of go over that here in just a minute. All right, well, let's talk about soft plastics. When I'm packing soft plastics, the first thing I think about is what type of rigs am I going to be using? Now, the, uh, the rigs that I use are our Texas rig, Carolina rig, I mean any kind of soft plastic rig, but the ones that I'm going to be using in the grass, in this thick matted grass or whatever, are going to be a Texas rig punch bait and, a, and maybe a little bit lighter Texas rig in the little sparse grass, um, a paddle tail swim bait, so that's a soft plastic. I'm going to figure out, you know, I got to get the stuff for that. So I always consider my terminal tackle first. For you guys that are fairly new at this, terminal tackle is basically a general term for hooks, sinkers, swivels, all the little things that you use to make your rigs out of. Okay, I've got a, this is one sweet box. This is my new Bass Mafia box. Uh, it's where I keep all my terminal tackle. And it's, the, it's slap full. I love little add-ons, little things, little beads, little everything, swivels. I keep, I keep a little bit of everything just in case I've got to fix a lure or a uh, modify lure, I've got worm weights, I've got all kinds of cool stuff in here. But anyway, so let me, let me think about what I'm gonna be using these soft plastics for. First of all, my swim bait. So I'm gonna pack some swim bait hooks, and it's shallow water, so I don't need heavy swim bait hooks. So I've got a little quarter ounce, and I've got a few eighth ounce in there, but this is a Moner swim bait hook. Let me get a little closer. It's a Moner swim bait hook, weighted hook. Got the little, uh, little keeper on there, the little hitchhiker, you screw the swim bait into and you make it weedless and it goes, you cast it out and you can bring it through the weeds. Uh, and I'm going to teach this when I'm doing the video, but when a fish hits a swim bait hook or a swim bait like that, when you're swimming it through the grass or anything else, the first thing you do is drop your rod down. I'm going to fish it real high. I'm going to drop my rod down. I'm going to wait till that fish gets a hold of that bait good. And then I'm going to set the hook kind of like a frog bite. You drop your rod down, you count one, two, and then you set the hook. And you'll catch that fish nearly every time. If you set the hook immediately, you're likely to pull the hook out of the, uh, put, pull the bait out of the fish's mouth. Just one of those things to consider. And I'll, like I said, I'll show that when I do that. Other things I have in here is I have some, some three-aught little flipping hooks, straight, straight shank flipping hooks for my smaller Texas rigs through the grass. That's a great grass hook. Um, Wacky rig stuff. I just make sure I have it all in there. And I, this box goes is always in my always in my boat. I always have my terminal tackle. But I just make sure that I'm I'm stocked up on on the types of hooks and things that I'm going to use. Now the specialty box is my punching box. Close this so I can show it to you. 
That's my punching box. Okay? So I've got heavy tungsten weights in here. I mean heavy. These, um, well, let's see, I've got half ounce all the way up to an ounce and a half, and when I get down to Florida, I'm gonna buy some, some two ounce uh, tungsten weights. Other things I have is I have these uh, ounce, ounce and a half. This is an ounce and a half, ton half tungsten weight that has a skirt on it, a little punch weight. It's got a little skirt on it. And I, I keep these black and blue skirts in stock. Um, I have, uh, actually the bag's right here, but I keep them out in my garage. Uh, several different colors uh, so or uh, skirts that I bought when a, when a uh, tackle store or a tackle company was going out of business several years ago and I just keep them stored in my garage. Um, other things I make sure that I'm stocked up on are my punch stops. And I have showed this on my punch video and it's really hard to show in this camera, but punch stops, heavy weights, big old heavy flipping hooks. These are the, uh, the hack attack flipping hooks. Big heavy wire, heavy gauge wire, four aught and five aught flipping hooks. So I make sure I have the terminal tackle that I need to get the job done. So I don't have to go buy any. And I, the only reason why I'm buying two ounce in Florida, because that's the only, only place that carries them. You cannot find a two ounce weight where there's no grass to be punched. So you go down there and that's when you buy that stuff. Okay, um, oh, I almost forgot, topwater frogs, duh. A topwater frog box. I don't leave home without it. And uh, then we get into the soft plastic. So I've got my terminal tackle packed. Um, I've got the punch and stuff packed. And so now we got to consider the soft plastics that I'm going to be using for that. All right, now, soft plastics. What are the several different ways that I can fish a soft plastic in the type of grass that's on o Okeechobee? That's that's always the question. You always consider what cover, or what situation you're going to be in when you choose whatever bait you're fishing, whether you're on the water or preparing to go on the water. So, a lot of things. One of the things I'm going to be doing is swimming a soft plastic through the through the grass. What kind of soft plastics? Well, paddle tails. I like solid paddle tails, like the the Zoom. Uh, what is it? Swimming Super Fluke or something? Yeah, Swimming Super Fluke. I'm going to buy it in colors that are going to show up on, in, in that muddy water. Uh, something that's a little bit darker. This has got a little flash to it. Uh, this is a bluegill flash. It's kind of blue. It's got some flash to it. Try those colors out. My favorite soft plastic to swim, though, is a worm. And not just any worm, a worm with like a little paddle tail, a little kicking tail. Uh, zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Worm. This is a great Carolina rig worm too. I've been using a Carolina rig for years and years and years. But uh, a, a little birdie that used to live down there, uh, the co-founder co of Mystery Tackle Box told me, you better have some June Bug. So I went and I bought some June Bug Ultra Vibe Speed Worms. Uh, and the way I store them, many of you guys have seen the video on how I, how I store my soft plastics, but is I put them in gallon Ziploc bags just like this and label them and then put them in a box that goes inside my boat. So it's easy to find them if I'm looking for flipping worms. And these are also paddle tail worms, but worms I can flip into heavy cover. I would much rather flip a worm most of the time into really, really, really thick cover than I would a, a crawbait uh, because there's a lot less appendages and things coming off the side of the bait. Uh, you know, it's it just, it's one of my preferences. So I've got, um, I've got six and a half inch plasma tails in here that I would flip into something. I've got, um, what other kinds of stuff? And once again, all the colors I'm considering is, are the colors that work in that dark colored water. Uh, I've got uh, the Rage Tail Cutter Worm is another good one to flip in. It's also a really good swimming worm like the Ultra Vibe Speed Worm. Uh, and then I've got my flipping baits, lizards, uh, beaver style baits, rage bugs, uh, and then a whole box of a whole bag of vile craws. And the colors are black and blue and green pumpkin. That's it. Oh, and Okeechobee, uh, uh, what do they call it? Okeechobee craw, I think. Uh, green pumpkin and blue. And then last but not least, the paddle tails, the swimming. The stuff you, you throw, you know, throw on a swim, swim bait hook and you throw around the grass. 
But, uh, you know, KVD for Perfect Plastics, I've got some, uh, some seismic paddle tails. Like I said, the swimming flukes are going to go in there. Uh, the hollow bodies, I've got some young money minnows, uh, which I, I don't particularly like them, but sometimes it works, so I like to at least have some handy. Big worms, too, big big swim baits. I'm going to go five inches or more. Um, and that's basically it. Now, when you're choosing uh, a, a flipping style bait for flipping into that grass, you always want one, and the vial craw is perfect for this. Let me show you. Holy cow, you always want one for uh, one that will slide down into that grass. And the thing I love about a bile craw is it's got that little arrow head or whatever, that little head to it that, that punches down in the grass and there's not a whole lot of appendages coming off of it. So it is an ideal punching and flipping bait. Uh, another thing that this is really good for and the reason I don't have any uh, solid plastic frogs, you know, the, the buzz frogs is because you can put a frog hook on here and I've got a few of them. Matter of fact, there's a bunch of frog hooks right there from Moner hooks. You put it on there and you can buzz it right across the surface and it, it works just like a frog. It's got a little keel on the bottom of it. Works just like a frog. You just buzz it right across. So there's the, the options are endless and I don't have to pack a whole lot. The other thing you can buzz across are these swim worms. These uh, ultra vibe speed worms, you can buzz them across the surface and the bass will tear them up, especially if they're up in those, that really shallow grass spawning or getting ready to spawn. But I think that's about it. That's, that's what I'm gonna take with me. I've got uh, this box and I've got another box that's probably gonna be half full of just whatever's extra shoved up in my boat. Um, and I'm of course gonna bring extras, uh, bring my, my uh, crankbaits just in case a cold front comes in and they pull out into the into the canal into the ditches i'm going to have all of my crankbaits with me they don't take up much room or they do <laughs> they have a bunch of crankbaits but they aren't that heavy so it's not going to weigh down the boat or anything else and uh and that's it the next video is going to be about how i pack my boat how i prepare all the little this you know the the life jackets and everything how i pack my boat and get it ready to go so like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Be sure to, to, to let me help you teach them how to fish by showing them my videos. But more importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day.